Hi, this is Phil Gursky, and you're listening to Quick Hits, a podcast about all things terrorism. Except that today, uh, I'm going to go a little bit off topic. There's an individual who's making a lot of news these days. He's been making a lot of news for a very long time, and that's Edward Snowden. Now, before I go on, I'm sure there's those of you out there that see Mr. Snowden as an incredibly patriotic hero that blew the whistle on the National Security Agency, the Signals Intelligence Agency of the United States, whom he was accused of intercepting things illegally, and he finally exposed these dastardly evildoers, and therefore he should be celebrated as a true patriot, as a true hero, and um, should be elected president. And now he's, uh, you hear him all the time, he's, uh, he wants a pardon and he's an expert on this, he's an expert on that. Well, you know, my views on expertise and those who claim to be experts, it isn't very charitable. And I just want to state for the record, I'm no Edward Snowden fan. I'm sure that I'm going to get a lot of hate mail over this one, but um, that's how I feel. Have someone having worked in security intelligence and paid to safeguard secrets, not give them all the New York Times. But I want to read to you something that I wrote three and a half years ago, a long time ago, about Mr. Snowden and the WikiLeaks, and uh, more importantly for me, the impact on Canadian intelligence, since I'm a Canadian, not an American. This is a podcast that was entitled, well, as I just said, WikiLeaks, Snowden, and the Impact on Canadian Intelligence, and it was published way back on March the 9th, 2017. Here's what I wrote back then, and it's got relevance for what's happening today. Is there any end in sight to the salacious details released by WikiLeaks or the contentious claims made by former NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden? Scarcely a week goes by without some new allegation of expose by the self-styled heroes of the common citizen, charged with blowing the cover off secrecy, protecting our collective privacy, and demonstrating to the world how evil intelligence agencies are. The latest WikiLeaks promise to share CIA hacking tools with technology companies is but the latest example of this form of do-goodism. Many praise these pioneers for their actions, which are not without risk, extradition, arrest, trial, and incarceration. And there's no question that what they have done and continue to do is gutsy. And it is not hard to see why some see these as Davids in a world of intelligence goliaths. Not surprisingly, agencies such as the CIA have bemoaned the damage that these leaks have done, but I'm sure that there are those who would dismiss this as sour grapes. There is, however, justified concern over what has been disclosed, and it is quite obvious that we are less safe as a result. It may be heroic for WikiLeaks to graciously inform Apple and Samsung of the weaknesses exploited by the CIA, for that protects average Joes and their privacy, but everyone seems to forget that some pretty nasty characters from organized crime figures to terrorists, also use that technology. Closed loopholes and back doors may raise our security, generally speaking, but the bad guys also benefit, and our security intelligence and law enforcement agencies are less capable of finding and tracking them. Although the leaks concern American spy agencies, NSA and the CIA, there are nevertheless lessons for Canada. Firstly, the latest CIA information hacking is believed to have been leaked by a contract employee at the CIA. Snowden was also a contractor, and the U.S. intelligence community is rife with them. We here in Canada rely less crucially on these types of employees, and our intelligence services should think twice before hiring more. Yes, full-time staff can also break the rules, but they are also inherently more trustworthy and perhaps better vetted. It is more expensive to have permanent staff, but is it not better to be secure to be secure than pennywise and pound foolish? Public trust in CSIS, CSC, and the RCMP appears to be eroding. Stories over illegal data storage by CSIS, CSC's collection of Canadian telephone numbers, and the RCMP's entrapment of two people in the 2013 Victoria legislature plot have all led some Canadians to assume that our protectors have gone rogue and are breaking the law. This trust has to be reestablished. And this can be achieved in part by having the heads of those agencies become a little more open with Canadians on what they do and why they do it. There will always be issues on the table, methods, sources, and ongoing operations, but there is much to gain by entering into a mature dialogue with our citizens. A lack of information leads to speculation, pseudo-expertise, myths, and conspiracy theories, by the way. A little more transparency can help restore some of that lost confidence. We need a much wider conversation on privacy. The CIA and its ilk should be the least of our worries. 
Technology giants like Google know a lot more about you than the CIA ever will, and that knowledge is collected and kept solely for economic exploitation. Are we as Canadians okay with that? Or is privacy overstated? Let's talk about this. Spy agencies exist for a reason. Some have indeed been used to keep tabs on their citizens and to abuse those citizens. While we in the West are not perfect, it is nevertheless true that the CSEs, CSEs, and RCMPs among us are here to keep us safe. They do so to a degree of professionalism and dedication not often recognized, warts and all. It is time to acknowledge the good they do and not focus solely on the alleged bad. Edward Snowden, Julian Assange, and others are painted as courageous whistleblowers. And maybe they are to some extent. Yet there's little in life that is uniquely positive, and this goes as well for the smashers of secrets. It is time for a much more nuanced discussion on intelligence leaks. My opinion of Snowden has not changed three and a half years later. This is Phil Gursky for Quick Hits, a podcast by Borealis Threat Risk Consulting in Ottawa, Canada.